and get started right at the top of the hour. Thank you all for joining us today. We're really excited to have you with us. And uh, this is going to be a fantastic conversation. I'm excited to chat with our uh, my friend and colleague, Joel Carroll. And I'm Michael Lisi. Both of us are with Wolf Vision, but we've been in many different roles in the industry in the last decade. And uh, today we're going to be chatting about creating the modern classroom experience with Wolf Vision's next generation solutions. Uh, so again, thank you for joining. And uh, let's jump right in. So this is going to be kind of an interesting dynamic today. Um, there is an opportunity for you to chat your questions in, and we will try and either answer them right in the midst of the conversation or uh, we'll answer them at the end. But we really do want to encourage you to uh, let us know what you're thinking and if you want to talk about anything in particular. Uh, but mainly we're going to be having a conversation about a handful of topics that we hope will be valuable to you, and we'd love to hear your thoughts as well as we proceed. We're going to be recording this, and so you'll also be able to share this information with others if you see fit uh, at a later date. So uh, with this, I'm going to kind of toss it over to Joel. And uh, Joel, can you just give us a, a quick overview of uh, who is Wolf Vision today and what do we do? Yeah, absolutely, Michael, and, uh, and thank you for having me. It's, it's good to be able to, to do this with you. Um, Wolf Vision, as many of you have known, has been really a leader in the market for presentation cameras, what we call visualizers. And through that knowledge that we've learned over the last many, many years, 30 years at this point, we've also started to learn how people want to change the way that they teach and change the way that they operate in some of their classroom and classroom technology, which has brought us to the other products we're going to be talking about a lot today, which is going to be our SignUp product line, as well as some of the software in which works with SignUp. So most of what we're going to concentrate on today is how can we change the way the classroom is being utilized through our appliances called the SignUp, the SignUp Core, and the SignUp Pure and some of the software that that entails. Perfect, awesome. So I guess one thing it's probably worthwhile mentioning, um, this isn't our first rodeo, fortunately, and a lot of these products, um, of our products have actually been out for a number of years already, and, and maybe you can speak to that. We've, we've received some accolades from the industry. Can you uh, help us understand sort of why is it that we have awards that date back year after year for some of the same products? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we start to look at some of our products, um, especially if, again, we're looking more at the appliances right now, what you're noticing is the same products getting awarded over and over and because it's actually getting better with age. And part of that has to do with the fact that each year, um, multiple times per year, we're adding additional features and, and capabilities to the product. Uh, just recently, we actually introduced one of the products that we'll talk about today called the Pure. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about what that means. Um, but it's a really exciting time to be following what Wolf Vision's doing. And about every three months, you're going to notice our existing product line is getting more and more capable through our firmware updates that we're providing. Yeah. I, actually, it's a really exciting time for, to work for the company. And I think you can probably attest. A lot of times when we, we have those the meetings with, actually, you can see Andreas and Christian in this in this picture. But they'll come and tell us about what our products are going to do now. Uh, and it's it almost feels like that that scene from James Bond where he meets with Q and then Q shows him all the cool new things he can do. I feel like we have that every quarter, wouldn't you? Doesn't it feel like that? You just can't wait. Uh, I totally agree. I want to say probably in this case, Andreas is kind of the Q uh, in that, in that kind of uh, conversation. And it's always exciting to, to hear what we're going to be coming out with. Now, obviously we can't share that with all of you at the moment, um, but there are some exciting things that you're going to see coming throughout the rest of the year, um, adding additionally to what we're going to talk about. Um, it cool. is definitely an exciting time to be at Wolf Vision. That's awesome. All right. Um, also, just really briefly, I'll just touch on, you know, we have had such a wonderful experience working with colleges and universities over the last decades. Uh, and we really love our partners. And this is just a really small sampling of, of schools we've worked with in just the last couple of years. But actually, if I were to fill the slide up with, with our customer base, I would need slide after slide after slide. So we, we also want to thank you all of, uh, of our higher education partners that have worked with us, have made a commitment to us, uh, and really allow us to be a part of your institution. It really means a lot to us, and, and we love this relationship, and, and are excited about what's going to happen even in the next couple of years. Uh, so let's dive right in, Joel. Um, talk to me about the SignUp Pure. Uh, what is it, and, uh, and where does it go? Well, when we look at the SignUp Pure, um, I mean, a lot of people have been looking at our technology in a multitude of ways. And the SignUp Pure, it really lives up to its name. It's purely for BYOD, Michael. 
Um, and this is an example. I actually have the box with me today sitting in my studio. Um, small, easy to use. And the concept is you walk into any space and you can easily broadcast and connect with your mirror cast device, such as Windows. Uh, I'm an Apple guy, so anything I'm doing in the Apple culture, or if you're utilizing anything from the Google culture, you'll be able to do that as well. Interesting. So um, we've had, we've won awards specifically for our wireless capabilities over the last few years. And this product is going to be just wireless only. Um, can you speak to it? Can you tell us more about it? Why there, I mean, there've been a lot of wireless products in the market. Why would people be interested in, in taking a look at this thing? It's, you know, when you look at this, it's, it's a term I've used for a long time. Um, when I start looking at BYOD, app free BYOD, um, I know how to use my device or I can at least teach somebody how to use their own device, meaning their phone, their iPad, their tablet, whatever it is. It's usually easier for you to understand your own technology versus the technology you have to go use in, let's say, a classroom or a conference space. And the real power behind this is it works natively, again, with iOS, it works natively uh, utilizing AirPlay, works with Miracast, works with Google Cast. All I have to do is understand how to use my device and I can connect to this without the need for an app, without the need for a special dongle. I walk in and I'm able to present. Uh, and the idea behind this is simplicity. Make this as easy as possible for people to be able to utilize their technology and share their content. Okay, so it's, it's gonna be wireless only. It's gonna have HDMI output. It can go into uh, an existing system rack. Uh, it can go into another switcher. It could go behind a display. Um, so um, in various applications in the classroom, but I think you mentioned we can also present, aside from iOS and Android and Chrome devices, we can also natively mirror Windows devices as well, right? Absolutely. So utilizing the Miracast technology, we'll be able to take Miracast into this product. Um, we actually will be able to do it one of two different ways. Currently, most people are aware of doing Miracast point to point. Uh, but when we introduce this product to the market, we're actually going to be utilizing something called MICE as well, which gives you the option of utilizing Miracast over your existing network infrastructure. So that minimizes some of the issues people had in the past. Miracast had a very small distance, about 30 feet. Now with Miracast over infrastructure, you can even use your existing network and eliminate some of those distance issues you may have run into before when using Microsoft products. That's huge. That's really huge. All right. Um, in this matter of bring your own device, you kind of brought it. Let's talk about how does this modernize the classroom experience? I mean, it, forget about the box. Tell me how can we use this in the classroom to create a more interactive teaching and learning experience for the faculty and the students? Well, as the training manager here, one of the things that I get to do is I do get to teach and I do get to instruct every once in a while. Uh, and it gives me the opportunity to also feel what the technology is being used. Uh, and I hear some of the same things when I talk to faculty at other institutions. Most of us can't sit still. We want to be able to get up. We want to be able to walk around the space. And utilizing this in this way is to allow me to take my iPad and walk around the space wherever I may be to be able to control um, my own apps, my own software, and I can seamlessly present that up to the device. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the simplicity of the BYOD, again, if I'm working in a classroom, the students have the ability to very easily share their content. So instead of having the students get up to do their presentation coming to the front of the room, they can easily log on to the device they can use a QR code that's an option to get onto the network and then be able to start presenting to the system, you know, in a matter of seconds, as opposed to traditionally download my app, download a piece of software or hit a web page to do the screen scrape. Um, so for me, it really allows me to show off the power of my technology, let's say my iPad and the apps that I'm teaching with in a classroom without having to worry about how I'm actually going to connect in that space. That's awesome. And, and you bring up a really good, I mean, I like that you use the word apps because man, there's so many cool applications that you can use on your personal devices. And I also like what you're saying. It, it really can, it sounds like it can simplify the user experience because everyone's comfortable with their own device and they're comfortable with their own software and they know how to use that. And if we can just make it easy for them to use that, then there's a, the learning curve goes way down. All they got to do is, you know, swipe in and hit connect. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah. Um, We've also, you know, it's interesting that so many students now have some kind of a smart device, cameras on their cell phones, um, their own tablets. Are there any other things that you've seen, other cool applications where we're able to use not just people's laptops and things, but, but even their mobile devices and, and things like that in the classroom? Yeah, if we're looking just at the BYD concept, um, when you look at the number of devices students have, all of them have cameras, whether it be a tablet, a phone, a camera. 
Um, and if they want to start looking at things, let's think of it maybe from a, a dissection lab where they have a cart that they might have in the middle of the room that they're going to be rolling around. Uh, the student could actually take the camera on their device and, you know, go and point to something with their camera and share that content wirelessly. So at this point, any multitude of students have the ability of sharing something directly in front of them to everybody else in the room. So we don't have to gather around the small tables like you and I probably had to do many years ago, Michael, and try to look at something in this little pot. We can actually do this with our own device and be able to share that video image uh, as an example. Um, or an electronics class, same thing. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, you've got 30 broadcast cameras now. You can move around the space. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's good. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about the, the Synap Core, which is the next upgrade from just a wireless receiver. Can you briefly tell us what is this thing and, and where does it go? Yeah, the Synap Core is pretty awesome. Uh, when you look at the core, um, above and beyond just BYOD, this could be the center of your classroom. Uh, the idea of the core is to provide you a multitude of different ways to interact with content and to show content. So you mentioned BYOD already, uh, but we also can bring in things such as cloud content. Maybe I have a file that I want to show in um, Google Docs that I want to bring up or a video I want to bring in a USB stick. Now, those are just a couple of the options of some of the things that we could show here. Um, in addition, potentially annotation over it as well. Really interesting. Excuse so um, I've heard, you know, there's this toy, this this coin has been termed of, of some of these all-in-one appliances. And this is kind of a change, I think, from what the industry has known in the past. You know, traditional system design involved lots of devices, almost always had an equipment rack, required custom integration. Tell us, what is this all-in-one concept? Um, and, you know, and normally we see this tethered to like a touchscreen TV. It's built into a TV or something. What is this all-in-one appliance and how does that impact higher ed? Yeah, and, it's, and I have it here in my studio, a touch screen. I mean, when we look at this, the main thing I hear about when I talk to a lot of different people in the market, uh, it comes down to ease of use. I mean, historically, it's been very difficult to walk into a classroom. Uh, you have to turn on the touch panel. You've got to bring down the screen, turn on whatever the device is from a control surface. And then you have to start using the different devices, maybe your computer, a laptop. How do I connect? Ease of use seems to be the most common thread I hear more and more people talk about. Utilizing the appliance, like the core, putting a touch screen in, it simplifies that integration, one from a install standpoint and a design standpoint, but most importantly, the ease of use for the faculty member, where I actually am seeing more faculty get involved and in starting to use the technology in the classroom because it's easy for them to share content, easy for them to annotate. They have one interface right here that they're gonna be working with the entire time. Uh, I really like that concept. As I walk into some of these different classrooms and show people how this works, the biggest thing they always say is, we don't know how to use everything in the room. There are too many things for us to interact with. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we're really hitting the nail on the head with this. That's actually a really interesting point about the matter of the, um, the touch screen, that there's one interface that they're gonna engage. And merging, I think what you're getting to is you're really merging the presentation content with the control. Of the of the meeting space, and I think it's interesting. Absolutely. I don't know if we if yeah. it seems like the world has moved on without us, but personally, I'm used to that experience now. Uh, when I use my smartphone or my tablet to map something in Google or watch YouTube, I've just been trained by the world that all the controls I need should somehow be on the screen in front of me. And I think it's even the same with like smart TVs now. Um, I, it sounds like we're actually bringing that into the classroom. And maybe that may be a more intuitive experience. I don't know. What, I mean, what have you seen? Is it, have we had any results of people telling us what their thoughts are of this yet? Or? I'll pick on myself a little bit to that point, Michael. I mean, I walk into a room or even into my own office. And when I walk into the office, I'm sitting there touching my computer and my computer is not a touch screen. Uh, or you walk into some <laughs> these other rooms and you're seeing people, they're like, why is this touch screen not working? And it, <laughs> it's because it's not a touch screen. I mean, you're right. We're hundred percent ingrained that everything should be a touch screen. Um, which is why I have one here. Um, but it simplifies that experience. We're all used to one interface that we interact to make everything happen in the room. Um, and I think that really, uh, really kind of sums up what you said is that's how our phones work. That's how our tablets work. That's how a lot of our computers work. That's what we're used to. So why not also provide that in an in instructional environment? Well, we also have some, well, we have some questions I'm going to get to in just a moment. Thank you for those of you that are, that are chatting these in. So we'll touch on them. Um, but I wanted to touch on, I mean, but there's some basic requirements in a classroom and I, I want to make sure that this can do that. So um, 
we have to be able to connect different devices in both wireless, yeah, but physically plug in certain sources. Got to be able to switch between them. Uh, typically, we need you know some kind of display control, simple volume control, uh, maybe even the ability to remotely manage the classroom if I'm having an issue. Can can this device do these things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you take the Synapse Core and you put it into a classroom and it's the center of, of that space, it absolutely can do that. I mean, you can turn a display on and off with it. You'd have the ability of coming into it maybe with one of our visualizers directly over USB. And I can even control the zoom and everything on that, the lighting effect, whatever I want to do with a visualizer. Uh, we have other people that are using third-party devices. Uh, they're taking a USB input but they're using say HDMI or VGA conversion devices to bring that into our product. So at that point now we could bring in, let's say a legacy laptop with VGA or potentially an HDMI desktop that might be sitting in that space. Um, so you're seeing that become more and more common in, in those classroom type environments, uh, remote support, like you mentioned, same thing um, from a support perspective, we want to make sure you're able to support the way you want to, meaning we have a soft piece of software you could run, as you're saying, to connect to it over the network and update firmware. Um, or if you like to walk around with a jump drive, I could go to each room and I could update firmware that way. So there's a multitude of ways to be able to install and support it based on your exact needs. Awesome. Um, and, and there's obviously some, you mentioned some other functions, and I think we'll dive into that next about in addition to those basics, some people are looking to upgrade even the experience a little bit further. They want to do some other cool collaborative things in the classroom. Maybe we'll touch on that in the next about applications. Let's touch on some of these questions. Is the Synapse uh, operating system open source? Mm -hmm. uh, with the Synapse operating system, this is, our, this is our product that resides on our hardware. So it's not an open source system. So anything that you're going to be utilizing with Synapse is something you'd be using on our Pure, uh, the core that we just talked about, and in a moment we'll be talking about the Synapse. But regarding open, but I think there's there's two sides of it. Open source would be like you can just go in and modify the code of something and make it your own, which mm -hmm. could be a security vulnerability potentially. Correct. But, but Correct. also, though, I think it's important if it's this is going to be like you mentioned a centerpiece of a system. It's going to have to be interoperable and somewhat universal, so it can interact with other vendors' products. What is the stance on that kind of interoperability? Are we really proprietary and closed off, or can we interact with other other? vendors and other pieces of software and specifically another question came yes, out about Extron. Correct. Can we interact with Extron for example? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, whether it's Extron or Kramer or AMX or whoever it may be, the whole goal of this product is to be able to work and interoperate with anyone. Uh, so if you're using somebody mentioned Extron, let's say you're using Extron and their touchlink control, you'd be able to control this device easily. Our API is very easy for people to write their own drivers and a lot of the other manufacturers already have drivers to be able to support that. Um, the HTCP comment that I see that was in here. Um, yeah, we support HTCP on our products, uh, inputs and outputs, especially when we talk about the sign app, but we can go in more detail there. Uh, and then the other question I see is resolution. All of our sign app products, the Pure, the Core, the sign app itself, they're all going to support 4K on the output of the resolution. So this is something that's going to be carried long into the future. It's not just something that you put in, you can't use with anybody else. The goal, again, is to be able to interact with any other product that you might have in that classroom. Outstanding. So let's talk about applications, and then we'll, we'll keep moving on. Um, where would you recommend, if a school was interested in this, they want to upgrade a traditional simple classroom, where would you propose this gets, gets deployed, or where are some places that you've seen it gets utilized? You know, I had an interesting conversation just last week um, with a uh, university, and one of the things they're looking for is huddle spaces. Huddle spaces is one of the places that this could be a really good fit. Now, with a lot of huddle spaces, they just want BYOD, but they, again, want to take it another level. They want to interact with the content. So what they'd be doing is utilizing annotation or utilizing the browser that's built in so then a student doesn't have to bring anything with them even. They can walk into that, that location. Uh, where they're going to be doing their meeting with their other collaborative students and they can even log into their office 365 account and be able to bring those documents up right there. So that was kind of an interesting use case that I saw um, that one of the university I was talking to last week is looking at utilizing. Um, and we also see it in the, in the classroom as well, uh, being the centerpiece of a classroom where students can share their content from anywhere within that space or the instructor is going to be the one that's walking in and sharing their content easily with their browser, again, Office 365, um, and annotation. I see a lot more people starting to utilize annotation in their instruction, uh, which I would say four or five years ago, I didn't see as often. Uh, so it's encouraging to see people start to utilize features like that. Now, a quick question on annotation. We're talking about annotating over only certain sources. I mean, is it like a, like a digital whiteboard version or what? 
Well, it's a good question. Um, it actually has two answers. Yes, it's a digital whiteboard. So you can bring up a whiteboarding function if you want to, to be able to, you know, write whatever your notes are. Then you can capture those notes and then distribute it to your students later. Um, but we also can annotate over the top of any source that's able to be shown on the display. So if I'm playing a video, for example, for my USB stick, I can pause that and then start writing directly over the top of that to show people exactly the area that I need them to look at. Awesome. That's great. All right, let's move on. That's really appreciate it. So um, it looks like this slide just kind of shows some connectivity options. I think to your point, different ways it can be connected to physical devices, cloud devices. Sounds like you can even maybe stream content into a classroom if you want it or have some IP based cameras be able to be brought into your source. Um, so let's go ahead and move on from that. We're running short on time. Okay, let's talk about the sign app. So this is the bigger brother to the core. Tell me what is this thing and, and where does it fit? I mean, this really is a progression of our products. We talked about Pure, we talked about Core, and now we're talking about SignUp. When we look at SignUp, this really can be the center of almost any space at this point, uh, whether it be your classroom, your conference room, or a large active learning space. Uh, with this, we can support local HDMI inputs. We've got two HDMI outputs, so an instructor could walk in, see their content locally in front of them, set up the classroom, and the second output could be used to share the content to the students in, in the space. Um, we also can do recording, streaming, all that's going to be capable when we look at the sign app. Okay. So, I mean, you didn't mention recording with the core. You didn't talk about, you know, I think you're, you're talking about streaming out. Um, so I'm, I'm hearing some Correct. more distance learning applications or, or being able to engage remote students outside of the classroom. Um, you did mention screenshots or, or, you know, screen grabs on the, the core, but it sounds like this goes a step further. You, yeah, it definitely on goes in a step further. I mean, we have the capability of working with other lecture, lecture capture systems as an example. So we could actually stream content live from the sign up to different manufacturers that they're doing the lecture capture. Or we could actually do the lecture capture locally, uh, working with companies like Panopto as an example, where we can store the content locally on the sign up and then push it out to the Panopto server later. So it adds another additional capability in the system. And again, it's just one box. So it simplifies that user interface for the instructor in that classroom. That's huge. Um, all right, so what kind of schools might be interested in the sign up solution? Uh, you know, really, when we start talking to the type of schools that'd be interested in it, they're schools that are looking to make a change and it's a cultural change even in their technology. Um, we're finding that more and more of these individuals are coming into the classroom expecting to be able to collaborate. Uh, and a lot of it's being driven by the student demand of what they want to see in the classroom. Um, so there's really, you know, small and large, we've got customers coming to us that are looking to fill problems like ease of use. We're looking for ways of supporting the system more readily. And we want to cut down on the number of devices in the classroom. I mean, those are three of the main things that I'm hearing on a regular basis. And that's any size uh, college or university that really this could be a fit for. And you touched on earlier the matter of software updates and, and even the awards we've been winning. I'm, I'm really fascinated by how that could affect a classroom refresh cycle. If you're not being pressed to have to continually reinstall hardware, but somehow your, your classrooms are getting now updated via network managed firmware. I mean, how does that talk to that, please? Yeah. And this is the part to me that's really excited, Michael. I mean, since I've even been here, um, the capabilities of sign up have grown exponentially. Um, and as long as the product's under warranty, those are going to come to you free of charge. So those could be features such as additional annotation capabilities that we just gave everybody uh, in our latest firmware release that came out in February. Um, we have about four of these a year. And each time that this new update comes out, typically it also gives you additional capabilities and features to enhance that learning experience and enhance the teaching experience. And again, across that warranty period, there's no charge for that. So as that product sits there, it's kind of like your iPhone. Over time, it gets better with age because you get new pieces of software, new firmware that's installed that gives you that additional uh, feature set. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, the question came in from Paul about, uh, is there any annual licensing? I mean, how did these firmware updates, I think you mentioned earlier, is it, do I have to pay us? It's a good question, yeah. Yeah, it's a real good question. And we actually, I think every one of us in the field hear this often. And no, there's no annual licensing fee. Um, again, throughout the warranty period, then you're going to get the, the free firmware updates during that period of time. So I, I'm assuming it has a set warranty. Can the warranty be like extended when you, when you buy the system or, I mean, what is the, 
Yeah, all the products have a three-year warranty. Uh, however, the Core and the Pure have the option of buying an additional two-year warranty. So then your hardware- sign up also, yeah? So, yeah, so the sign up and the Core, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Okay, that's great. Um, someone has to see the backside of the units. I'm gonna, we'll talk to that later. I don't have it in the slide deck, but probably I'm gonna point you to the website and you'll be able to get everything you want from in terms of technical detail. Um, some interesting applications. I think for the sake of time, I may just speak to a couple of these pictures. because Some of them actually are pictures I took. Um, but <laughs> you can see, you know, in various meeting spaces, our ability to push video signals around to multiple displays, matrix route, fully have a preview monitor you can see in the top right corner. I, one thing I, this is really, I love this. Um, there's a keyboard and mouse plugged in in the top right corner and the teachers actually can use the touch screen or drive this class experience with their mouse. And this is, it sounds corny, but um, they love it. They can double click on a source and it goes full screen. They double click on a different source and it, that goes full screen. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever seen an AV presentation system that you can drive with a mouse if you want or use the touch screen, but I really love it. Um, can you speak to what Absolutely. we're seeing in the bottom right image though? This, I didn't take this picture. What, what yeah. are we seeing with all these computers? This is a case study we can send out to everybody afterwards if they're interested, but what they're actually doing is they're sitting in a learning lab where they're able to see all the content that the instructor's utilizing in the front of the room on their individual computers. In this case, they're actually using the Windows machines and using our app loca located locally on the computer so they can now see what's going on. They could record that content, make their own notes. It all gives them the avail availability from the student perspective to not have to look all the way to the front of that room, as you might notice, to see that small display. So that teaching experience is sitting right here, right in front of me. That's awesome. All right, we're running out of time. So let's just, we only got a couple minutes left. Um, you, again, you can see all the cool connectivity options. Let's uh, jump into, so that's all the connection options on the sign up. Let's jump into vSolution Matrix, our last topic um, in six seconds. What is it? Tell me what makes it amazing. V-Solution Matrix, what makes it amazing is, again, ease of use. It allows me to be in a collaborative environment where I can easily take my content and share it out to multiple student stations or pods or take their content and share it back to my station or pod and then share it out to the students. I mean, historically, in active learning environments, I think, Michael, you and I have run through this before. There's a multitude of software options, hardware options. It hasn't been easy. People walk in. They try to figure out how to share the content all over the place. And that room I've seen in most cases ends up being a glorified distribution amplifier where my content in the instructor station is what's always going to the students. So the V solution allows us to use the existing network in the classroom and share the content back and forth between student and uh, teacher stations. Okay, so we're talking about, I'm gonna probably flip slides over here. We're talking about um, active learning classroom spaces, uh, lots of displays around in a meeting environment. Absolutely. Um, schools have been using the other solutions in the past. What makes this uh, unique? Are the vSolution matrix approach over traditional video distribution solutions and, you know? I would say there's really kind of three things to look at. One is the user experience from the faculty that's using the space. It's simple and easy for them to learn how to use and route the solution. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get them on, up and running. The student experience, I would say, is probably the second one. The students already know how to utilize their devices. It's not requiring them to download an app. They can walk in, easily share their content, or as you had mentioned earlier, interact directly on a touch screen or utilizing a keyboard or mouse at their station with a group as a whole. In addition to that, I mean, I look at it from the design perspective. In this room right here, Michael, that you kind of have shown, I can tell you how many stations you may need. I mean, if I look at a room that's gonna have four stations, four student stations, an instructor, I really only need five boxes plus a feature pack called vSolution Matrix. So from a design and integration standpoint, it takes moments for me to design it, and it's very easy to set up on the network. Wow, an active learning classroom with five boxes, um, that's a deviation from the past. I think we both, you know, yeah. having worked for Lona Absolutely. and I was the SVSI rep, and we're used to some kind of signal distribution solution for transmitters, receivers, or encoders, decoders, just to move mm -hmm. signals around. And then you got to figure out what's the collaborative component. It sounds like these, we've, we've really baked these two into one box where it's handling both signal distribution and the collaborative capabilities. That's how we're keeping it so simple. Is that yeah, that's, that's absolutely the case. Okay. Um, and, you know, based, and I used to design those systems in the past, they worked. The difference is, is they weren't easy for faculty, students, and whatever to, to operate with. And I, and I really think this is where our real 
our power is going to be is that ease of use for anybody that comes into that space. Awesome. So we're at our time. We've got it's, uh, one question currently available. Can you have two touch screens attached to the sign app specifically, I think? Yeah, and if we're looking at the sign up, absolutely. Uh, I do have one install that somebody's working on now. It's a courtroom, actually, uh, but I believe they have five touch screens that they're utilizing uh, in that case, where each one of those touch screens is going to allow for prosecution, defense, and so forth. Uh, so, not necessarily an education application they're doing today, um, but it's being installed as we speak. Yeah, and and just for clarification, can you, you can you be in, touching both of them at the same time, or is it just you can pick any one you want, but you're going to be interacting with one touch screen at a time? Yeah, they're going to be interacting with both of them at the same time. Um, I'm going to add another layer to this though as well, which is cool, is I can also add my app in. So in that same space, I could also still be walking around with my app like I'm in front of the touch screen and doing my annotation or control of that space simultaneously. Interesting. Um, so again, it, it's kind of a unique, unique way of doing that project. That's great. Okay, uh, if there, are there any other questions, please chat them really quick. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, while we're waiting for that, I want to give you uh, both Joel and my contact information. Um, we're both domestic. We are happy to respond directly to any emails. Um, you can also gain, glean a lot more information at wolfvision.com, but uh, please feel free to reach out to us and just we can specifically speak to whatever it is you want to learn about. It might be easier than digging through a website. Um, with that, I think because we are at the at the half hour mark, uh, friends, we really want to thank you so much for joining us. And this won't be the last conversation. Hopefully, Joel and I will have together. Joel, thank you so much <laughs> for, for participating and just taking the curveballs as I threw them at you. Um, Absolutely. And it, it was great being here. Uh, I see some familiar names on here as well. So we look forward to working with you guys. And if you have any questions, like we said, reach out to either one of us directly. Uh, we'd be happy to, to continue the conversation longer. Wonderful. And we'll see you all at Infocom if we don't see you before then. Absolutely. We'll talk to you all later. Thank you, Michael. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye.